On January 8, 2020, around 250 million Indian workers are all set to go on a national strike. This is probably the largest ever strike in the country's history and maybe even in any country across the world. Workers are mobilizing against the far-right Narendra Modi government and its policies at the economic and at the social level. Ever since coming to power in 2014, and especially since returning to power in 2019, the Modi government has launched an all-out war against the working class. The government is carrying forward a policy of mass privatization, underfunding of the public sector, and dilution of labor laws. Through this, it aims to weaken the organized working class, which is the major barrier to the supremacy of the right wing in India. To resist this, 10 national trade unions and a number of other independent workers' associations have jointly given the call for a countrywide strike action. The call was given at a national mass convention of workers held on Parliament Street in New Delhi on September 30th. The strike will see the convergence of various worker struggles that have been going on for the past decade. Nearly 175 farmers and agricultural workers' organizations will also take part in the national strike. They will be protesting against the increasing debt and the refusal of the government to ensure remunerative prices for their produce. This has led to large-scale economic distress and even suicides among the farmers. So who are the organizers of this strike? The central trade unions or the CTUs, namely the INTUC, the AITUC, HMS, CITU, AIUTUC, TUCC, SEWA, AICCTU, LPF and UTUC are the main organizers. Along with them, about 60 organizations of students and elected office bearers of several universities have extended their solidarity with regard to raised fee structures and opposition to the commercialization of education. What are the key demands of these trade unions? According to data from the Center for Monitoring Indian Economy, the unemployment rate in the Indian economy was almost 10% at the end of September 2019, a record 45-year high. Unemployment among youth between the ages of 20 and 29 has increased by 73% over the last two years, reaching 28%. As many as 30 to 35% of those who do have jobs are categorized as underemployed, which means their work does not match their qualifications. As many as 4.7 million people have lost their jobs. The workers are demanding an immediate solution to the crisis of unemployment, which threatens the very future of the country. Another key demand is resolving the economic crisis. The government has been assuming that its neoliberal policies will automatically hike up the growth rate. However, the opposite has happened, with the GDP hitting a six-year low of 5% in the April-June quarter in 2019. There has been a sharp decline in the purchasing power of common people because of rising unemployment, stagnant wages, and the increasing cost of necessities. These include electricity, public transport, and medicines. Due to this, the demand for basic commodities has sunk in the domestic market, leaving 25% of the productive capacity of the industrial sector unutilized. Amid all this, corporate net profits grew by 22.3% during 2018-19. Social inequality has risen to such an extent that the richest 1% cornered 73% of the total wealth produced in the Indian economy last year, leaving a mere 2% to be shared among the poorest half of the country's population, which is about 670 million people. The working class of the country is bearing the brunt of this economic crisis and is demanding an answer. Another key issue is the revoking of regressive labour reforms. Amid all this economic crisis and unemployment, the assault on labour continues. The main aspect of this attack is the replacement of 44 central labour laws with four labour codes. The Modi government has introduced a series of changes in existing labour laws, which have taken away even the limited protection offered in terms of job security, wages and various benefits. In fact, the new labour codes entail a regime of more working hours, more workload and more dependence on owners for retaining jobs and less rights to organise or legally challenge exploitative practices. The new laws which are in the process of being notified will ease penalties on managements for violation of laws. It will make it more difficult for workers to nail down such violations and hollow the labour inspection system that was supposed to implement these laws. This will definitely pave the way for more and unbridled exploitation. At the same time, there is also a huge hike in prices. Cereals, pulses, cooking oils and the big three vegetables that is potatoes, onions and tomatoes are staples throughout India. The prices of most of these items are soaring. Wheat prices are up by 56% and flour by 26%. Potato prices have shot up by 67% and onion prices have increased 5 times. Despite clueless and desperate measures by the government like importing some onions, nothing is changing. 
Data shows that in November 2019, food inflation was 8.66%, compared with the general inflation of 5.54%. Along with record levels of unemployment and stagnating wages, this back-breaking price rise is destroying the lives of working families. Another key demand of the workers is an end to disinvestment and stopping foreign direct investment in public sector units. The public sector in India, that is companies and concerns that are owned by the central and state governments, are the repository of huge national wealth. This includes land and minerals and vital infrastructure. The BJP-led government, however, has decided to allow 100% foreign direct investment in such strategic sectors of the Indian economy, like defence, railways, telecom, civil aviation, satellites, petroleum, mining and coal. This will not only destroy the existing public sector companies, which provide jobs to millions, but will also compromise national interest and leave the country at the mercy of private players. In addition to this, the central trade unions are also demanding the withdrawal of the Land Acquisition Amendment Bill or Ordinance, which helps big corporates take over large tracts of land, while the owners suffer. There are a number of other demands put forward by the unions as well. Some of these are In addition to all of this, the central trade unions have also taken a strong stand against the discriminatory and divisive Citizenship Amendment Act and the associated National Population Register and National Register of Citizens. These steps will end up making Muslims second-class citizens inside the country and will lead to huge religious and ethnic violence. India's working class has been a pillar of resistance against the Narendra Modi-led government. The strike of January 8th will once again see the workers of the country present an alternative vision for India and renew their struggle to achieve this vision.